Alright, so I got another uh, multimeter here. I It's a cheap one, and I figured it's probably going to be pretty bad, but who knows. I, uh, I gave away my little unity meter, uh, and I was looking to replace it, and I thought about it, and I thought, well, I'll buy this one instead just to give it a shot. I do plan on actually replacing it, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So I don't expect much. It was, uh, I think, around twelve, thirteen dollars. But uh, you know, and when they spend that much on a nice, fancy-looking box, and what do you know? We actually got more than one piece of paper in here. Now I believe it said that there was no battery included since they've started cracking down on shipping batteries uh, via airmail. So I'm gonna have to open this up anyway. So we'll take a look. So it's uh, apparently B-side, uh, I'm not sure if whoever picked the name for that uh, is aware of what you know that means. The B-side of the album was the shitty side that you got, you know, all the crap you didn't want to pay for. So we'll pull these leads out and yeah, they're pretty stiff, you know, it'll be uh, PVC insulation there. Most likely. Well, at least they actually branded their probes, unlike some people with stickers. But 1000 volts cat, oh, cat 2, 10 amps max. I wouldn't want to put 10 amps through those. I feel not too bad for greasiness. Sharp, uh, yeah, not super sharp, but I guess reasonable. They're not, oh, that one's really sharp. So maybe just hit and miss on the probes. And uh, the thing that caught my eye about this is that the range uh, switch here looks an awful lot like the unity meter. So it made me wonder, but they do have a backlight, so, you know, a couple extra buttons here. So, ooh, kickity buttons. They're not, uh, they're hard plastic, not a soft rubber and they feel like there's a uh, actual button in there. Hmm, a little bit more crisp than I thought. Ah, there we go. It's got a little bit of flex in it. I mean, something this small probably easy. Does this holster not pop off easily? Oh, well, I'm just going to leave that on. It's pretty firm rubber on there. It's not uh, it's not super squishy, but I guess it offers a bit of protection. And again, like I said, this thing was 12 bucks. So, uh, so just before I open it up, just take a quick look at the tilting bale. Um, it flips up and it looks like that's way too far, but I don't know, that actually kind of seems to work. I guess just because you're used to the tilting bale being up higher. But, uh, yeah, it's useless for using the range switch because, again, it's just plastic there. They didn't bother putting any of this material, like, you know. Still slides a bit, but even up on these little edges here, uh, you know, this material has enough grip, whereas this plastic is just slippery. Really surprised there. There's actually a uh, threaded metal insert to hold that screw for the battery compartment. Don't expect to see that on the rest of it. Yeah, she needs a 9 volt battery, and I guess I got to pop this off to get the uh, get the other screws. So there we go, and we're in. So we do have a pair of ceramic fuses. They are not the large uh, high rupture capacity. Wasn't really expecting that. Maybe I'll zoom in a bit here on that board. The board actually is surprisingly clean looking for uh, for this price point. I was expecting to see, you know, a much sloppier job. So. Looks like we got a uh, chip on board. 
I figure the accuracy will probably be, you know, uh, fairly reasonable as they usually are. Uh, it's really hard to not make an accurate meter. Long term stability, eh, maybe not so good. So it looks like it's, uh, you know, trimmed in in analog here. Upon closer inspection, it looked like the board was relatively clean, but uh, couldn't really see these joints too well until I held it up a bit closer. Um, but that should hopefully show up. So these buttons here are all hand soldered, and some of them are pretty bad. There's, you know, blob of solder there, and you can see the flux residue, and then the backlight um, LED here. That was hand soldered and uh, that actually looks not bad but you can see in here there's the flux has not been cleaned off. So 10 amp jack here comes in and goes directly through this fuse which is nice you don't see anything going off uh, you know where they're screwing around in that. Um, and then I'm assuming it obviously it comes over but uh, I'm not seeing all the protection diodes that I'd expect uh, you know while shouldn't say that I'd expect that you would expect to see in a higher end product not a surprise in a lower end uh, device I just see these two diodes here and where was it there's one over there but uh, I'm not sure if that's related or not but yeah on the current protect input there is not the uh, full bridge there got a pair of ICs I'm gonna go look those up I'm sure one of those will be the uh, the voltage reference but other than that not a, a heck of a lot you know we've got the uh, input fuse here for the milliamp uh, range which is shared with the uh, voltage and uh, you know you got the PTC's there so uh, I guess they they do have something but also note that you know in terms of high voltage protection you know you got coming in here over and then this side is linked to here and then coming back so that you're you know using multiple resistors to get that higher uh, voltage but uh, when you put them like that side by side you know really you got from there to there that is your gap there so I've lowered uh, the camera down to match more the uh, angle I'll be looking at the bench if I was sitting on my uh, stool here and uh, yeah the tilting bale actually holds it at a you know not bad of an angle I thought it was a little bit you know not quite enough maybe eh. Or like that would be ideal but that's not bad for you know cheap thing so let's start out with the uh, good old continuity buzzer so seems like it's good and fast or well I shouldn't say really fast but you know it's reasonably fast uh, for a junkie meter uh, not latch not surprising all right so I'm gonna use my uh, linear supply here split rail and we'll just see how they compare so so far it looks like they're you know pretty close so that settle in a bit here. It is going to be what? Something else to note there is we're going, uh, you know, it's fairly quick there to jump across ranges, so. So I would say accuracy about what I'd expect. Well, on the uh, DC volts, 
All right, now I got them hooked up in series uh, to measure current. So let's just see how they do on the milliamps range here. Ah, uh, that looks pretty good to me. I'll turn that up a bit. Two. Again, they're looking pretty close. So there you go. Within a couple of the least significant digits. All right, so we're on the microamp range now. So at the low end, they seem like they're pretty close, so let's start cranking that up a bit. So unfortunately, uh, you know, I'm just using a resistor to generate this, so you can see the heating is causing some issues there, but they look like they're following each other fairly uh, fairly well. So let's uh, move on and measure the uh, the actual current range. Alright, so this is just a uh, dead short across my old uh, Radio Shack power supply. And it's got current limiting in it, so we'll just see it's not uh, it's not fixed to something precise, but it's supposed to be about two and a half amps, so we'll see how well this does here. Ah, uh, that looks like it's pretty much right on. All right, so I've got uh, the ones basically from the well, the first of each decade, so 1, 10, 100, 1K, etc. And I've measured all these resistors out already to see what they read on the X Tech, and I'm going to hook them all up. So, and then we'll compare. So, just first thing we'll note is with the leads that I'm using, I'm using the same leads for both. All right, so here's my fancy little table. So here's just the nominal resistor, uh, resistor value. Here's what I measured it uh, with the x -Tech and then our uh, cheap, uh, what is it, B-side meter uh, here. So I've got these two values here in brackets, and that's because when I measured the uh, probe resistance, it was reading as point, uh, 0.8, I believe. Oh, whoops, it was 0.7, so I actually messed those up. That should be uh, 1.1 and 10.4. So I corrected these these two here uh, because there was no reading there. I just wrote down what it was uh, spitting out. So as you can see, you know, they're not reading quite the same. But as we get up uh, into the higher ranges, you know, you're getting down to really close, at least, you know, a couple of the least significant digits. Um, in there so yeah I mean you expect that if the voltage is on the resistance is going to be you know pretty much on so it's not a super high end meter by any means but didn't expect it to be take a quick look here I got this hooked up reading the uh, input resistance so it looks like it's uh, a little over 7 mag ohm so it's not quite a 10 mag ohm uh, input impedance and uh, 
you know, also haven't checked out the backlight. I completely forgot to uh, turn the backlight on here on the x -Tech earlier, which would have made reading it easier. I noticed it's a little hard, uh, at least on the LCD, it's showing up pretty dark. But, uh, you know, you can see comparing them, the backlight is definitely brighter. Uh, which, I mean, could be a good thing. You know, you need that light, you need the light. Uh, not so great for battery life, but... I don't know, let's see if it turns off or not. And it does. Okay, now we'll switch this over here to the microamps range, and let's just see what what we're looking at here. Uh, so pretty typical. We've got 100 ohm. It looks like a couple ohm resistor there. Could take uh, actual measurement, uh, I guess, of the burden voltage and figure it out, but think that's going to be close enough. I'm just going to read the uh, voltage that it's we're getting out of this thing. So a nice low voltage uh, when you're measuring resistance with this. And uh, let's just do a quick check to see what we get for the uh, diode voltage. And uh, so it looks like it does one and a half volts maximum. And we're looking at so just over half a milliamp. All right, so just take a quick look at the frequency here. Uh, so I believe this is supposed to be 480 hertz signal. And as you can see, there is no ranging on it. It's just a fixed range. So, oops, I'll turn that backlight back on to make it easier to read. And that is a 980 uh, hertz signal. So, yeah, not particularly, uh, you know, great. It's just a fixed 20 kilohertz uh, range there, so. All right, so I guess, you know, in conclusion, it's a meter. I didn't test everything out, obviously, um, you know, really thoroughly, but uh, it appears to function all right and reasonably well. I checked the price, and I paid $13.86 with shipping uh, in Canadian funds. So it's a pretty damn cheap meter. It's definitely a big step up from the DT830, I think it is. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't suggest everyone runs out and grabs one or, you know, goes online and orders one. But uh, if you need, you know, uh, maybe a couple extra multimeters that you want kicking around uh, and you're on a really limited budget, then it may be something to consider. I mean... You know, the range switch not exactly the greatest. These buttons are not very comfortable. You know, there is a lot of downsides. They, you know, you got to give up uh, in order to get down to a price point like that. But all in all, mm, I think if you, you know, you need a couple meters and you just don't have the money to spend uh, and you're looking for, you know, doing like for hobby use. Hobby Electronics. I'm um, sure, as with all of these meters, uh, you know, I wouldn't trust my, my life on it. I would not take this uh, to go stick in, you know, uh, the main panel or, or anywhere. Uh, you know, they are only claiming a CAT2 rating at 600 volts, so they're not trying to make the 600 volt. Uh, uh, Cat 3 rating. Do notice here that it is marked, however, that the fuses are only 250 volt uh, fuses. Uh, again, they're not high rupture fuses, so use some common sense. Don't uh, I wouldn't use this on anything high power. Probably wouldn't really want to probe around automotive either, uh, just because the high current that are currents that can be involved. But uh, yeah, I think for hobby use, it's reasonable and decent. I mean the the leads are not terrible. They're not uh, you know they're not really nice leads but what do you expect when you're getting it with a product that you're paying you know less than fourteen dollars shipped unless you're in Australia since their dollars worth about the same. Uh, the rest of the world you know adjust that accordingly but it's not a hell of a lot of money. So yeah uh, I guess that's about it for this time.